with the first important question. What is print? <laughs> well, I think I could volunteer Jan. <laughs> you can have all back from there. Yeah, yeah. I, I would really like to start with that one. I think when we're students of printmaking, we come in contact with lots of definitions over the course of our training and over in the studio. But this is my favourite one. Please stand up. Stand up. No. <laughs> Oh. Oh, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Rothenstein, British printmaker born in 1908. Um, I read somewhere, I can't remember where the quote was now, but Michael Rothenstein described printmaking as one body pressed against another. <laughs> and I didn't think I could give Stephen the full body trick. And we often use that um, that term in printmaking that it's that's the paper kissing the plate. It's an image transferred from one surface to another. And so that that <coughs> quote attributed to Michael Rothenstein has always stayed with me as actually the definition of the mm -hmm. And I'd like you to think that each time each time <laughs> you're giving somebody a <laughs> Where's the red lipstick? Yeah. Oh, it got worn off. <laughs> so that's my definition. One surface. Yes. I mean, one of the things that um, I think Russell raised was about the communal thing of working together. And in some ways, I think for a lot of people, they could make prints with the sheer joy of working um, and collaborating with other people, like, for example, in a, in a group sharing a press. Because I know with my students that they have to learn, they have to learn to work together, and it's a communal thing, which is quite a bit interpreted as an international phenomenon, really, that it's a metaphor for what should happen in the world. Anyway, that's just a little comment. We are? Hello? Hello? I'll take we live in a hot liquid. Are we on? Are we off? Yes. So can I handle the Russell? Yeah. Russell? Russell? And what does it mean to you? Uh, well, I, I think that that's a beautiful uh, You don't need a microphone, it's not doing anything. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful definition of what is a print. Um, I've often uh, used the analogy of um, uh, printing from one surface to another surface. And um, I, uh, I don't think really um, that the, uh, the hardcore issue of what is a print uh, is it, it, to print like it's, it's, it's undeniable. You know what it is if you actually experience it. But where, where the interesting thing for us is to uh, ex explore that boundary that printmaking does. And as I said to you earlier, the issue to do with community. Um, and that's really touching one. It's really uh, presenting a situation where people's minds and physicality come together. And I think that this is a really interesting part of the whole activity of printmaking. So um, I, I think also it's very, very dangerous to start to define what is the print. Um, I personally think that, especially in art practice, that the whole thing should be open-ended anyway. And anyone who's uh, putting theories and issues to you, I think you've probably got to uh, question that person seriously because especially in art, there is no risk. And there's lots of different things that can be challenged in any rule. And I think as, I think that even 50 years ago, as Aki just demonstrated, we're already looking at breaking through those barriers and where the edges are and, and becoming less concerned with some of those earlier markers like the making of an addition or um, the, the particular terminology. Um, and I think you know, that's 
just, just being pushed further and further. And, and the print is really just the, the surface impression that might be part of the work. And part of the whole experience. The too. whole experience. It might be the good morning kiss in the studio. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> print making for the day. And I think, I guess, the other aspect of print making is it's multiple character. Mm -hmm. And I find that very useful for working through ideas that you might have a plate or a screen or whatever you're using. And you can make endless variations of the one thing and combine them in different ways. I think some of the work I showed you was a combination of screen printing um, and etching and painting and digital work. So it opens a lot of doors and some artists use printmaking as a step towards making other things. But most of us do it because we believe in printmaking in its own right. Are there any questions uh, about this uh, first sort of... Uh, yeah. Yes, I have a couple of questions. That, you know, there's a lot of discussion about this amongst our own um, colleagues here. And um, I'd like to pose two questions, if I could, that, that are the most commonly discussed amongst uh, our crew. And one is, at what point does a digital image become a digital print and not a photograph? And secondly, at what stage does a work which may have begun with some form of print to which has been added many other media become a mixed media work and not a print? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can we leave the first question, can we leave the digital later, one yeah. to a little bit later? Sure. Yeah. Um, and then we can just look at the, the mixed media one. And I, and I think what um, Russell has just said really about the way, and, and Stephen, that we choose to put various processes together, um, it's got print process in it. But whether it's a print or whether it's a work of art more generally, it's an open-ended question. It is an open-ended, and, 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 um, and it yeah, only I, becomes an issue when you want to put that work of art into a print competition <laughs> or, or an exhibition. I guess that's why. Or think, an but, exhibition, yeah. and then I think you bring in an ex a, the, there's an external arbiter, if you like, the people who are running the print competition. They decide on that instance, or the person who's got the who's curating the show. It's their call. But from the artist's perspective, you try it on. It's strange to be in a position to be an arbitrator of what is print. Um, if you're in a, an exhibition <coughs> or a mounting an exhibition, and to put that definition to, to all the participants, um, I guess to you, you have to have rules and regulations. And with regards to my experience at Tamron, um, they were incredibly uh, serious about the issue that the work had to be handmade. And now that, that means that the element that you're working on, um, you had to, or the artist had to physically make that image. And it was a real no-no as the am testify with me that if the artist asked you to help them, which Audrey Flack used to do with me, uh, you, you had to say no. The only actual assistance that you could give a, an artist was um, the, uh, uh, a geometric or a hard line. That's, that's all you could do. So in that core of um, you know, definitions and um, for Tamron, it was very important that there had to be a human um, element coming into it right at the core from the artist, which was, you know, intriguing for me. It's always been an intriguing issue, but it can be counted. Uh, and when it comes to digital imaging, um, we have always been confronted with the problem of reproductions. And you can go and get a reproduction of Van Gogh's um, sunflowers from Kmart. Um, and to, to a certain extent, that is a print. There's no, there's no doubt about it. But it happens to be printed in a way where it's, um, 
It's been printed in huge numbers and it's been printed in uh, a high speed, um, a high speed, uh, usually a lithographic process. And that's where, uh, once again, Tamron used to pull, pull back and say, well, the number is important when it comes to the addition. So you, you, have, you can't go over a hundred. And if you do go over a hundred or a thousand, you're in trouble. Mm. But it is also very important, um, I think, that um, uh, it's not only the number, but it is very important that it is going to be told what it is. So if you have the Van Gogh image and it is printed by John, then it should say it is John who printed it after an image by Van Gogh. So I think it is not only the number, but it is also the information you are giving to the people who are looking at it. So it's also about integrity. Absolutely. That's the word I would use in, like, in relation to all that. Mm. And I guess there are different levels of integrity. <laughs> so there, there are some very grey areas, but they're very good questions. Yeah. Digital printing does not kiss the two surfaces. Yeah, I, I was interested, Russell, you said two surfaces, but Jan says they have to touch, and that's where that's a very <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Yeah. interesting and, and Michael Rothenstein's definition, he was writing in the 50s, but in fact, this digital question, I guess we can't avoid it. No, we we go into yeah. now. It was actually going to be the last question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's one that's close to my heart because Many of those images that I showed you were digital images. Now, so it's something that I've thought about a lot. Now, the kissing part of it still happens. The ink on the paper, there it is. It just happens inside that machine. It has um, these words. It has some kiss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, it on, it I know something about kiss. Long <laughs> Of many of those images of mine, I guess I'm making analogies between um, the construction of a matrix, if you like, because many printmakers also use that as part of their definition, that, that, the, that the kiss, if you like, comes from a matrix. There's a surface that's yeah, made. Um, let's, and go, let's can you do my little just go back to it, because this section worried me before I started, you know, to create these for the exhibition, so I did a digital print, but I transferred, so I kissed the surface, which my fingers can tell that they're all nice and sore at the moment. Um, so the, the, the thing is, with the digital, if you say that print, um, you know, the, the definition of print, that means everyone here can actually enter digital printing, whether it be a photograph, whether it be without any other, so that's what you're telling me now, so I really would like to know what the traditional sense, how can you bring it back to some kind of tra traditional formula? Because I can go out and print, digitally print, as a photographer, and say, well, this is print, and I can enter it into exhibitions, and I can, you know, so that's well, like a little bit of dilemma there. Yeah. And I'd like to answer it with my work here. So this, this is, uh, this is part of the installation, which was, you probably saw the works. Mm -hmm. We could bring them up. Mm -hmm. So this, this could be uh, a surfboard in a shop down pool. Um, it, it could be just a design. Uh, but I, I maintain this as a print. Now, those, those images there are my drawings. So initially... Initially, the, the work has, has got the, what I was talking about in terms of the, the stand the, of the hand. hand. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually um, collaged and cut um, through, through Photoshop by myself. So that's how I've come up with this. So once again, the hand's in there, even though it's been done with a computer. Then that is transferred to um, a, a print, uh, a digital print, onto a fabric, and then the fabric's inlaid into the glass, mm -hmm. the top layer of that circle. And mm -hmm. for doing it, 
if I had to have a master shaper, a master glasser, and exactly the same scenario as what I would have if I was doing a lithograph. In fact, it's got the glasses name down the bottom uh, because I insisted he sign it too. And I, you can imagine how sympathetic I am to making sure that, and I think you um, brought this issue up of making sure that the printmaker, master printer, has an acknowledgement in, in the work because it's their creative input just as much as the artist's. So Russell, what about a hand-drawn animation? Um, this is a hand-drawn animation to a certain extent. I mean, I mean a video. Yeah. Could you say a video? No, was it's not a video. No, 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 would I, you say a video was a print if it was hand-drawn? Uh, well, if if the artist um, if mm. the artist wanted to say it was, I think I'd go on with that. I'd go would on with that. I'd say that comes from the matrix. Yeah. So because it comes from the matrix falls within the, the realm of print based or printing form in each Whether you want it to be hand, you know, material or virtual is up to you, the practitioner. That has begun hand, with the hand so so that's that's quite to my mind, that's quite suitable. It's when somebody puts a photograph uh, it's taken by a camera and then it's called it is a print, but how do you define it in terms of the classical print making process? Same 
Well, it doesn't have the same integrity as a, as a work of art as the digital print that's intended to be a work of art in its own right. And, and I also think that the question, if I can go on, um, but the question about using, you know, this, that or the other as a print, isn't that, that kind of went out the window with the urinal going into the gallery. If you say it's a print, isn't it a print? Or if you say it's a work of art, it's a work of art. You, the gallery might not agree, other printmakers might not agree, but that's very much a personal I think, thing, I think, I think your point is very good about educating the public because we all have to make our own decisions. Um, if it says in the catalogue it's a digital print, then it's a digital print. If it's mixed media, yeah. So that's, maybe that's something that belongs to the print council to help with that. I'm not sure who, whose responsibility is. Sydney Morning Herald could be doing it, explaining what they're doing to help the public understand. Mm. Mm. Your paintings that you do, um, are they yeah. an, an include print? What do you call it? Are you talking about my work? Yes. Oh, the mixed media work that I showed you. Yeah. Well, you call them mixed media. Well, <laughs> the mixed media, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Just, yeah. I wouldn't call them print because no. they're partly painted and yeah. so on. But that's a good question. But they're, to me, very obviously mixed media. Mixed media. Um, whereas I think what some other people are talking about is stuff that's a bit marginal. Mm. What, do, what, what do we call it? And Stephen, you wouldn't um, try to put one of those recent works in the Fremantle Print Prize. No. Because you would acknowledge that they actually sit outside. Well, yes. Whilst there's a print component, mm. you, wouldn't, you would refer to them not specifically as prints. Yeah, they're in a little lost world of their own. <laughs> <laughs> so would that then go back to, to the second question is how do you perceive the contemporary relationship between printmaking and other media. Yes, well, we sort of got onto that, haven't we? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd just like to make an observation that there's a lot of people um, who practice traditional methods predominantly, you know, they fix it up always, but predominantly traditional methods and feel fiercely protective of um, the classification of the print under that banner. Mm -hmm. And the introduction of digital offends a lot of people. It, it does because it seems too easy. It seems um, something yeah. other than printmaking, and this is why it's such a passionate topic for discussion. Because it is, you know, one seems easy. You can debate that as well. Um, there's no overarching definition. There, there's no way of classifying it, as you rightly pointed out. Um, and. People are looking for an ambassador to define it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's in some senses a fruitless search mm -hmm. because there isn't actually, there isn't going to be an ultimate arbiter like that. But it's interesting when you think about the whole history of printmaking and you go back to look at engraving and wood engraving and engraving on metal and then you look at lithography as a, as a new way of reproducing and you look when I, when I first came to printmaking in the 70s, early 80s, people were saying precisely what you're saying, but the, the, um, the, the, the demon, if you like, that was going to destroy printmaking then was photographic processes. Mm -hmm. And so photographic etchings and photographic lithography and, and photographic screen prints were evil. This was, uh, people were, people were, were, were offended. People were offended because they believed this was an easy way of working. And it took artists, say, like B. Maddock, for example, to actually produce most exquisite, complex images that incorporated photographic images. Not <laughs> but you know, B was here in Australia making that work. And, and gradually, um, photographic imagery that just became part of printmaking. I mean, it's talked about printmaking. And I believe that these discussions will go on. But we're almost at the point now where digital processes, and this is a beautiful word here, uh, Russell, it, the digital is just incorporated into it. Digital is just sort of part of a process that has an outcome. And I think where you're looking for arbiters and definitions isn't sort of in talking about prints, but it's in those print competitions or it's, it's, it's in those sort of peripheral things rather than in the integrity of the art making itself. So it doesn't, it's part of the process.
much. I think also if you think about digital prints in a way it's an art form. I was sitting in a flying art school workshop process at digital prints and the young man that was there, he took three hours to produce something that was amazing on the computer. So it took three hours of intense work artistically with what he had on the computer to make it. What I would take four days so artistically, if someone can curate and judge that digital print well enough when they're you know, um, looking at the whole exhibition as a print exhibition, then it would be even brown if the technical ability to put it together was intense as it takes us to put something together. And sometimes when we do printmaking, we can do something in five minutes on a stone. And it's beautiful. No procrastination. But it's that gift. So when we can judge them perhaps on equal ground, and the person judging has the technical ability to see the technique in both processes, then perhaps it's even. But until that time. Well, I would like to add at this point that uh, Usually in tertiary education, you can see a reflection of lots of ideas, especially about what current trends are about. And who's actually putting out the agenda are usually emerging artists coming from the art schools. And I can assure you that um, over the last two decades, Queensland College of Art, which I've been part of, would probably have struggled to have kept printmaking as one of its now five majors. And the reason is that uh, contemporary thinking, contemporary art making, is interdisciplinary. And it engages people in a way where you cannot ignore modern technology, you cannot ignore the uh, ebb and flow of all sorts of mediums interacting with one another. So that was why it was absolutely essential to me to put interdisciplinary in front of print media for our mm -hmm. department. And it's been like that for many, many years. And even though it's a handful, we do encourage uh, 3D, 2D combinations. We do encourage performance works using print or drawing. People can major in our area in drawing. And that's kept the uh, population, but importantly, it's actually kept the inspiration and vitality of our area. Now, I, I would have predicted that if we've kept a really solid, a pure printmaking department, if we would have struggled as ceramics, it bit the dust, and it bit the dust in many institutions. And uh, we, we still find it hard to actually keep an area like lithography afloat um, if it wasn't probably for my enthusiasm and you know making sure that we've got the numbers to justify a department. Uh, that too might you know, be the death knell of a beautiful art form. But putting it all together in one family, it's, uh, it's for me safe to die. Yeah, the, the package works. Yeah. Is it uh, not, um, <coughs> um, of course, uh, with, with um, uh, the printmaking and the importance of printmaking in the public arena, um, can I ask you the question that um, I think is uh, also very important to know what is the place of the print in a private and public collection? Because we are <coughs> talking about um, how to make the print, and in the end you have made that print, and then you want to show it, so it goes to the uh, exhibition, and then you want to sell it, and then it, it needs to go into a um, collection. And um, I feel that um, probably Australian people should get a better education, the collectors, and as well as, as the, the, the institutions, 
the importance of the print in the world <coughs> of, of, of um, uh, the art world. So my question is, um, do you think that, um, well, of course it's important the place, but what is the place? What is its place? Yeah. Uh, let me just make a couple of quick points there. I think um, prints have tr traditionally been a very inexpensive medium because of their basis as multiple. So collections were able to be really built, private collections could be built of prints quite easily and quite inexpensively. Um, there was a sort of not trading of prints between artists. Um, the Print Council, of course, with its work over the last 50 years, has built many private collections where people who've been members of the Print Council subscribed and got a new print every year. And you know, now 50 years later, there's some beautiful collections of prints around people who would not otherwise have built an art collection. Um, I think uh, there's certain things about prints and collecting prints that has a, an advantage perhaps over some other art forms. You put them on the wall, they're generally small scale, not always. Um, you can store them in drawers, um, you can move them around at far, far <coughs> cheaper cost than moving a large sculpture or painting around when you shift house. There are lots of reasons why building a print collection. And it gives you an insight into certain artist practice. I mean, there are many times when you could afford to buy a print by an artist when you could never afford to buy a painting and sculpture by them. And it gives you a really interesting insight, just like with their drawings and their sketchbooks do, of, of the broader practice. So prints can sort of masquerade you know, around the edges of but also think too, as well as having people having a private collection in a folio, for example. And I love that because yeah. I really love paper. And we haven't really talked about paper before. No. Especially when I when I first made prints, I only had daddy old Bernie Carpenter from Bernie in Tasmania. Beautiful plastic. <laughs> and that, that was a great saviour for a lot of people because it was a heavier sort of paper mm. fitting up the subject. But also with the technology we have now for prints, like Russell's work that you showed you things can happen on a much larger scale, so they can be very um, powerful in a, in, a, in a gallery in a museum. So that aspect of printmaking I find really intriguing, the way that that has evolved. I think Russell's work is a great example of that, and some of the work we showed previously. I think on a slightly uh, tangential thing, it's interesting to see in uh, major galleries too how their view of prints has changed in the way that they hang their prints. Mm. There were, and the way they organised their organisation. The Queensland Art Gallery formerly had a department called the Department of Prints or something like that. And they did print making shows, but if you go to the Queensland Art Gallery now, you'll see the prints just hanging on the wall next to, in a thematically organised show. And you see the same thing in the way that they've organised their organisation behind the scenes. You know, the curator of prints is, is not there now. You know, might be curator of Australian art, but they've divided their organisation differently. There are people here who might be able to talk about those sort of shifts, reflect shifts in printmaking as well. Uh, you'd be happy to actually. Um, it was a quote we talked in Brisbane when the Art Gallery changed from uh, physical based categories to regional based categories. So there's Australian art, Asia Pacific art, international art, which is kind of odd that Asia is international. The odd Asia Pacific and international art. But that's to do with the APT and other things. Um, and there was a real worry at the time that the uh, printing books and paper would be marginalised and not shown much. There was a small corridor space that was dedicated to it and help move the art gallery building. Um, but it is now, as Jen says, it just gets integrated into, um, into exhibitions. And, um, and you know what? They really stand up beautifully. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come upon those prints in those big shows, particularly for those of us who love paper. It doesn't make your heart sore when you see that, and they're beautiful. I think it's great. Well, and it also shows that it is um, uh, on an even foot with all the other media. And uh, I always think that um, I just, just will downsize matters. Um, <laughs> meaning that in the 60s, 70s, uh, suddenly the, 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 the prints, and especially in America, 
uh, Rauschenberg and Jim Dine and all those, they started to really um, uh, extend the size of the print. And, uh, and it became really um, sort of, yeah, it was um, um, on an even footing with the big paintings and so on, but in just in another medium. And I, therefore, I think that what you say in Vincent Art Gallery and also at Art Gallery in New South Wales, uh, the same happened. Not everybody is happy about it, though, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add something quickly on the book side of the print issue that I was trying to get my hand up before? Um, as a printmaker, and Jan was talking about the kids, and Stephen and I sort of both said about paper, a traditional print engages an aesthetic experience that I don't think a lot of digital work can do. With that, the paper, the velvety texture, the smell and the look of the ink, um, digital processes can't replicate that. And if you made an analogy between ceramics 3D printing, an object that is designed on a computer and printed with a 3D printer does not have that same aesthetic experience in the hand So all of those mediums have uh, different qualities and different attributes. Um, you know, I've often found it quite limiting in a way that printmaking revolves around the size of the press, particularly for intaglio relief and um, lithography, but not so with screen print. You can shift that um, element so that you can move it. But um, this raises a really big issue with a lot of artists because they do want to work large. There is uh, a, a huge um, emphasis, especially in contemporary art practice, to fill spaces, to make uh, things that engaging that they engulf with not only the object itself but the space. So this is where printmaking and this is where digital imaging is going to help provide, at least at this stage, you can get a huge scroll of image. And that's something that's very difficult to do in conventional presses. But just to the flip side of that, is that I've just bought two most exquisite little etchings uh, and I know the digital print will never do that. They'll never speak the language of etching. But the language is getting good. It's on Hallamore. It's not embedded into the surface of the paper. It's not pushed in the way in which uh, a lithograph or an etching is pushed in. And that's part of the problem of the relationship but it doesn't look like a magazine image. It's not coming across. It's still, if you can put this onto a good quality paper, it's, it's a step forward. And I think I would just add on top of that, there are good and bad digital prints. There's a lot of bad digital prints around. When it's worked well, you can be just seductive and juice a good paper and in the hands of a good artist and knows what they're doing. So I, I'm not defending all digital art by any means. There's a lot of We've got just time for one more question. It's not a question, it's an observation. And I think it's going to be wonderful for all our traditional things because I think that, you know, I spoke to the digital, it's going to become a part of everything, the same as photography did in art. And the resurgence of letterpress, for example, all the letterpress machines were nearly, you know, destroyed and they just the designers and the artists that actually bought them um, out of the printeries and put them back into service. And I think that people really love traditional hand work on hands work. And I don't think it's ever going to go. And I think you'll be safe with your uh, <laughs> your your presses and you know your department saying because I think people just love it. It's so honestly, yeah. They're all going to become a part of, like you've done, uh, Russell. You've mixed. Um, and you've kissed a lot of materials in that circle. So um, that's just a different way. And I really think it's all going to be very combined. I just want to know how, my idea is how it can all combine 
and which way, you know, for example, there's a beautiful piece in the gallery where it's actually hand carved out of the photograph, and I was so impressed and so inspired by that. So, um, yeah, it's all just it's become how we, how we get to the I'd like to read a little quote, and it's from Brett Whiteley. Mm -hmm. But I can, if I would like to, a funny little story about Brett Whiteley. That Catherine and I were driving back from North Queensland, and we were in a place called Imogen, which some of you will know, which is Western Queensland, late at night and we stopped to get petrol and a cup of tea or something. And there was a truckie there we, who we chatted to. And he said, um, uh, what are you doing? He said, um, oh, we're artists. He said, well, you, do you do murals or statues? <laughs> no, no, the only two choices. We said murals. But the point was, um, he said, oh, I, I did a bit of work for, for one of them artists, Brad Whitney. <laughs> Brad Whitney? So I finally worked out that he meant Brett Whiteley, and he transported some artwork for, for Brett, and Brett said, oh, well, I can pay you the 600 bucks so we can have this drawing. <laughs> and he said, don't want that, don't want that drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in there. The quote is a bit about um, the art process and it sort of relates to me to printmaking because in printmaking, there are, as I said earlier, there are so many possibilities about experimenting with ideas and stuff. And Brett Whiteley was talking about the idea of experimenting and, and, and saying, well, maybe you should get to a point with something where you create some sort of chaos. And you have the work and then the quote is, an artist six months or a year, or usually in a state of intense frustration, you will see something that you truly have never seen before, and that is the beginning of yourself, and that heralds the beginning of a typical pleasure. And I think a lot of printmaking is about that typical pleasure, and about the great satisfaction of problem solving, thinking naturally, and giving it a shot. You know, that's my point. Well, I think uh, that, um it's a very good um, uh, way to end uh, this Q and A. Um, I'm not quite sure that we have come to this conclusion of what is print, and I was actually hoping that we wouldn't come to a conclusion. Because it's much nicer to just go on. <laughs> so I think that um, I hope you enjoyed it and. Um, Please give a standing ovation to <laughs> <laughs>